thanks in part to a total fitness plan designed by the sports nutritionist Robert Haas and described in their book, Forever Fit. But health was just one item Cher wanted to talk about when she sat down recently with our Joel Siegel in a conversation where she confessed to one of her biggest temptations. I love chocolate and every once in a while I want to have a snow cone or a, you know, I want to have all that child food that we grew up on, you know, and I think I might have been a little lucky than a lot of people because my mother was a health food nut. My mother found the only health food store in the valley when I was little and so I, it wasn't so, so hard for me, but still, those things that, you know, like every once in a while I just want to go to Jack in the Box and get a taco and I know it's no good for me, but that's what I want to do. So I think it's more, it's more a way of life. We can't, we have to change some of our eating patterns, but I don't want, I don't want to feel neglected or deprived all the time. Food is, food does that. I mean, it's a reward. Yeah. And so we eat it when we, when we feel good, we eat something we shouldn't. And when we feel bad, we eat something right. we shouldn't, cause, so we'll feel You bad. break up with a guy and a pint of haagen is your best friend, you know? Do you understand what kind of symbol you are to women? I, I hope I'm the same kind of symbol to them that Jane Fonda is to me. I mean, it's like I keep thinking, okay, Jane's 10 years older than me, and she looks better than anybody I know, so I know there's, you know, there's a chance for me. I think everybody needs, I mean, I'm not a symbol, but I think that I'm living, and they see things that I'm going through, and so they know. It's like I just am kind of like a little light that says, this is not impossible. This is attainable, if, you know, and, and you don't have to kill yourself to do it. I thought you were kidnapped. I thought you were dead. I can't I think of anyone else in show business who has done so many varied things with so much success. Cher has hit records and she goes on the road and then she makes movies and wins an Oscar. Does that surprise you? It's a, how, how does that happen? I don't know. It sounds yeah. good though, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> it sounds so easy when you say it like that too, but yeah, it's really, I'm, I mean, I've been really fortunate in my life to be able to do all the things that I do and then sometimes it gets such a burden to do all those things and try to be juggling them and you know and, and not fall into the trap of show business is a business and I don't want to fall into the trap of it I want to make art no matter what anyone thinks it is it has to be art to me you know and that's what I want to do I don't want to make three movies a year anymore I want to make I want to make one movie and I want to go on tour and I want to make records and I want to see people and it's my life I mean I've been doing it for 25 years it's not a career uh, we're coming to you tonight from Malibu. On uh, the show, you played a, a video disc jockey yes. for Armed Forces Radio, and you, you gave the G.I.s a tour of, of, of house. my house. And these are all my friends, and we're going to the Armed Forces Network all over the world. They called me, you know, and said, would I be interested in doing this disc jockey thing? And, and they said they couldn't show any of my videos because they wouldn't pass any of the censors, but the house I'm living in, I'm, I'm adding some stuff to it, and it's a mess, I, and so I thought, this will be great, we'll do it out here, I'll take all the guys through the house, the GIs, and, uh, and it'll be an interesting side of me that no one will ever get to see except them. And you have to know a lot of people over there because you did your video on the uh, USS Missouri. Well, yeah, I know all those guys, and they were great. I would really like to go over there, and I don't see that there's, even though I'm told that there are reasons that I can't, it doesn't really, I can't buy it still, you know, I, I certainly think that I could get around it some way, you know, even if I didn't perform, if I just went over and did like what Steve Martin did, because it seems to me that these guys should be able to see people that remind them of home. There were things you couldn't say to the troops on Armed Forces Radio. Tell us now, what do you want to tell them? I wanted to be more American, and I was feeling a little watered down, mm. you know? But this is TV, so I'm still a little watered down. <laughs> but I, they know. They know what I'm thinking. They know how I feel. From her bell-bottom beginnings to her sequin stardom, Cher looks back on her sunny days. She wanted to be in the movies ever since she saw Dumbo at the age of five. When she was a few months old, her father abandoned the family and forced her mother to temporarily put her in an orphanage. Later, she moved from town to town, switching schools as her mother switched boyfriends. 
She ran away after her 16th birthday, but as Cher now recalls, her luck was about to change. When they met, she was studying acting. Sonny said actors are fools, and besides, he had a plan. We want to be together. We want to sing. That's where we should put the energy. Sherilyn Sarkeesian met Sonny Bono at a Hollywood coffee shop. She was 16, he was 27. They eloped in 1964, and the next year appeared on Hollywood A Go-Go, singing their first single, Just You. always said Cher could sing. Music critics said Sonny couldn't. I never even thought of myself as a good singer. That, that's a difficult thing, too, to be famous for something that you don't even think you do very well. Her voice became as famous as her bell-bottom look. I had wanted to be an actress for a really long time. And then Sonny and Cher became Sonny and Cher. Six years after this performance, Sonny and Cher reached their peak with their own television show. Four years later, the show is canceled. So is their marriage. Cher recently hosted a special two-hour music video program that was shown to American troops in the Persian Gulf. None of Cher's own videos were included in the program because her revealing costumes would have offended Saudi Arabian standards. Next, the... I'm Kurt Loder with MTV News. Cher has a new album out this week, an LP called Love Hurts, whose track, reflecting its somewhat heartbroken tone, has been a hit in years past for both the Everly Brothers and the 70s Scottish band Nazareth. Cher herself has been making hit records for more than a quarter of a century now, starting back in 1965, when she and her ex-husband Sonny Bono went to number one with I Got You, Babe, and continuing through such solo hits as Bang Bang and the more recent Turn Back Time. So you'd figure that by now, this woman knows a hit song when she hears one. But as we discovered in talking to her recently, that's not exactly the case. I've never been good at it. Usually when I don't like a song or I can't remember it, it's a huge hit. <laughs> really? Such as what? Have you had other experiences like that? Such as Turn Back Time. Yeah. Uh, what else? Bang Bang. There was a lot really? of songs like, if I didn't like them or I couldn't remember them. I was on the road with Turn Back Time for eight months. I still couldn't remember the words all the time. We'd always laugh. <laughs> And I can't remember the words to love and understanding, so I'm sure it's going to be a hit. <laughs> it's a wig. Cher will be touring with a new band a little later this year. Meanwhile, Allman Brothers singer Greg Allman, the father of Cher's son, Elijah, is now branching out into movies.